God bless you. The March 1988 tape of the month is a teaching by Dr. Werwill from the Georgia Limb Meeting on April 7, 1985. Dr. Werwill taught the moment of a new age. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Victor Paul Werwill. Today I thought I'd like to bless you people in dealing with the subject of the moment of a new age. Saturday is the seventh day of a week, and Jesus Christ arose on Saturday. This in itself is significant because seven, biblically, seven is the number of perfection. And when everything was perfected for your redemption and mine and Jesus Christ had paid it all, then God raised him from the dead and it was on the seventh day. These things are all so significant to me because numbers in scripture are not used haphazardly. They're used with a very great mathematical exactness. And you just keep learning. It was just this week, this past week, that I learned why Jesus Christ was on the cross for six hours. You know, I knew he was crucified at nine in the morning and died at three in the afternoon at the exact hour when the Passover lamb was killed. But I'd really never given it any great thought why six hours because once they nailed him to the cross if that was really all that was to it why didn't he just give up his life then he didn't die on the cross because they nailed it to him the scripture says he gave up his life he laid it down he could have laid it down five minutes after they nailed him up there and he wouldn't have had to suffer for the rest of the hours but The reason he was on the cross for six hours, because six is the biblical number for man. And Jesus Christ died for all men's sins all over the world. And that's why he was hanged on the cross and he stayed there for six hours. And the reason he was crucified in the midst of four is because four is a world number. And he died for the sins of the world, therefore he was crucified in the midst of four. And God raised him on the third day because of the divine perfection of that day. It is also remarkable to me that when Jesus Christ appeared for the first time on what we know as the first day of the week, Easter Sunday, He appeared unto Mary Magdalene, and that record is in Mark 16 class. Mark 16 in verse 9. Now when, and the word when is after. Mark 16, 9. Now after Jesus was risen early, The first of the week, the word day, you don't need. The first of the week, which would be Easter Sunday. First day of the week would still be Easter Sunday. He appeared first to whom? Mary Magdalene. Out of whom he had cast what? Seven devils. That to me, class, is a remarkable statement of truth. You would think after all of this period of time and all the people that took a crack at Jesus Christ, all those governmental leaders, all the religious leaders, that once God had raised him from the dead and Jesus had successfully completed his whole mission, the first ones that he should have appeared to were those dudes that were responsible basically for his death. But he didn't. He appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary Magdalene was not a woman of 
great society importance. He was not one of those blue bloods. She was a woman out of whom he had done what? Cast seven devils. And she was a woman that really loved him because all during those six hours he was hanging on the cross, she was at the cross. Later when Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body and buried it in that new sepulcher, Mary Magdalene stood far off and watched it happen. Then later on, when the, the following day, when they set the guards and they sealed the tomb politically and officially, she watched him do all of this. So she was a woman with great love in her heart for Jesus Christ. And to me, it's a remarkable thing that on His first appearance on Easter Sunday, he appeared to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. But as he appeared to her, there's a record in John 20, you have to understand, at the time of disappearance to Mary Magdalene. John chapter 20. Verse 11, John 20, 11, But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. It wasn't there any longer. That's where it had lain. And those two angels said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself about and saw Jesus standing in his resurrected body, and knew not that it was Jesus. Verse 15. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seek thou? She supposing him, Jesus, to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Verse 16, Jesus saith unto her, Mary, and she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Then verse 17, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I am to send my Father and your Father to my God and your God. She recognized Jesus and her natural instinct was to reach out and touch him. And then Jesus made this statement, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended. The reason he had to make this statement because Jesus Christ is the complete fulfillment of all the law. And this was the first day after the weekly Sabbath, Saturday. And on this first day after that first weekly Sabbath of the Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread was when the high priest had to go into the temple and wave the first sheaf of barley and dedicate it because this was the day from which they started counting 50 days to Pentecost this Easter Sunday morning seven weeks of seven Saturdays, and then the following day, Sunday, would always be Pentecost. And of course, you and I looking back know that that Pentecost that's coming now in 50 days is going to be much different than any Pentecost they've ever celebrated before. And that's why Jesus said, do not touch me, because the law required that the individual, the priest that would, high priest that would present that sheaf of barley 
in no way could be contaminated or touched by any other human being after he had been cleansed, before he made the offering. And Jesus Christ had been totally remade. He came out of the tomb with a totally new body, and in that resurrected body that he appeared to Mary, he said to her, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. That does not mean he was going to go to heaven. You and I know that happened some 40 days later, the ascension. What happened here is not yet ascended. He's not yet gone to the temple and made that presentation to the Father. He's not yet ascended up to the temple to make that presentation. That's the meaning because you and I know 40 days later is when he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. And we also know that later on in the day, here he said, touch me not. Yet later on in the day, according to Matthew 28, verse 8, And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. Verse 9, and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and did what? Worshipped him. See? When he first appeared to Mary, he said, Touch me not. Yet here in Matthew, a little while later, they all touch him. 